Webb's had a tremendous impact on my life. It's really funny to look around the room and, and recognize that in some ways my friendship with Jacques Dion was really based on hydrocoil. There are other people at Microvention that I had friends with, but um, Ischel and Saru, uh, Sal and Marcus and, and Laurence have become really good friends in part because of what happened with Sequent. And then for Sequent to be bought by Microvention has just made this all uh, like a family thing for me. Uh, but for ruptured aneurysms, I strongly believe that one of the most important clinical perspectives is that we've got to get them through the rupture. We know that within about a year to 18 months, the risk of a ruptured aneurysm, if you can just keep them out of trouble, goes back down to the risk of an unruptured aneurysm. And uh, I, um, unlike some of uh, my colleagues up here, uh, am still at a center where uh, we do a lot of, of aneurysm clipping, um, but there are major disadvantages uh, to open surgery that involve the necessity of getting into a tight brain and having retraction, uh, the, the difficulty in seeing perforators that are perfectly obvious and hard to injure with an endovascular approach. Um, nothing has had a bigger impact on aneurysm treatment uh, than ISAT and, and the work that Andy Molino did to prove the benefit of endovascular therapy over open surgery uh, in patients who can safely be treated with both. But I would argue that since ISAT, probably the biggest and most impactful innovation, the most impactful clinical evidence is, is this, is Webb. Um, uh, uh, my fellow Laurence already made the point but the GCP data that they have generated uh, with Patricia and with the team out of Europe, the teaching they gave us in the US that enabled us to do WebIT with no role in cases is, is a, a real fundamental leap forward in the treatment of ruptured aneurysms. Many of you have seen this case. It's the first ruptured aneurysm treated with Webb in the United States. It's a woman who lives in Memphis and it, it, it to me is still the emblematic case of where Webb makes a big difference in so many ways. Here on this CT, just on this one cut, you can see that she's presenting with hydrocephalus. She absolutely needs an external ventricular drain, and she's got a, a heavy burden of hemorrhage. She's a smoker. She's only 53, very high chance of vasospasm. And, and this in my practice is one that I would have clipped prior to Webb, and she was lucky that when she came in, we were just to the point where we felt comfortable treating the first ruptured patients in the United States with Webb. Um, I don't know if you're not going to clip this. Maybe you, you try to dome protect with a balloon. Um, but if you look at how very wide this aneurysm is, both on the AP and on the lateral, uh, I would submit that it's a really tough aneurysm to get good protection in the short term um, without putting something in the artery. Um, and so um, we treated her. It was a, an under seven minute case. Um, there was immediate stasis. She had severe vasospasm and needed re repeat trips to the angio lab. And so as, as was mentioned, uh, you know, in 24 hours, this is a very well protected aneurysm. Certainly it was at seven days. And um, in, in comparing what happens when um, the sales force from Medtronic and Stryker and the competitors start talking about it, what happens in an FDA trial and what we do in trying to take care of patients one at a time, uh, I think it's amusing that she is a failure. Um, she is, in the context of Webbit, an abject failure because she has that core lab adjudicated less than one millimeter neck remnant, which has now been stable for seven years. Um, so if this is failure, I don't want to be successful. Um, she ended up needing a ventricular peritoneal shunt, so not only a ventriculostomy put in, but then a ventriculostomy taken out, and then a shunt put in on the other side of her head. She had no bleeding complications because she never so much as smelled uh, aspirin, uh, and uh, she's living independently. She's taking care of her children who are now at the point where they're going to college, um, and she's a, a career woman too. Um, uh, here are some other cases. This is a 65-year-old with sudden severe headache and very bad tortuous access. Um, uh, here's our, our access um, uh, plan. This was before we had the Sophia EX. Uh, you can see this upward pointing ACOM. Again, unlike um, perhaps um, Reims or, or Bicetra, we're still clipping, but, but there's very good evidence that these ACOMs that point up are much more dangerous in open surgery than the ACOMs that point down. 
Um, uh, but this is something that I think for many of the physicians in the room, you, you know what you can do and how quickly you can do it and how safely you can do it um, with the web. Uh, the access is fairly straightforward. We've learned, uh, my first 17 case uh, uh, that I saw in a human uh, was uh, Laurent Spell's case. Um, uh, we've learned that the VIA uh, 17 uh, moves quite a bit more, uh, but once you're comfortable with that, once you're comfortable with dis distal access catheters, again, you can get really fantastic stable occlusion. Um, we've tried to do everything we can to communicate what we think are safe um, steps uh, that, again, largely learned from colleagues in Europe, um, Ischel and, and, and the French, and everyone has been uh, so generous with teaching us, so we've, we've uh, written up how to web and put videos out there. Um, and and it's, it's so safe and so easy that even people who are dedicated anti-web physicians find it so. So I don't want to name names. Um, but I, I was joking recently with, with Karsten Schroeder that microvention is kind of like a golden retriever. They're always nice, even when you're mean to them. Uh, whereas some of their competitors really make a, a really concerted effort to attack web. And so the physician treating this patient is literally the most prominent web criticism uh, uh, physician uh, in the United States, he's been on the podium multiple times talking about how standard cystic coiling is so much better than web. And uh, a, a few months ago, he called me and texted me these pictures and said, I don't know what to do with this. It's a very wide neck ruptured basilar aneurysm. And I said, well, uh, you, you do know what to do with it, otherwise you wouldn't be calling me. Um, <laughs> it, you're, you're, you're just having a hard time with uh, swallowing your words. And, and so um, even though he has dedicated a significant portion of his industry-funded uh, academic career to trashing the web, um, uh, he was able, can you play that movie? He was able to treat this uh, with a web device. I apologize if it's not gonna play, but it's gonna show that the web is in great shape uh, in 11 minutes. Uh, and, and then he called me and I said, well, well how do you feel uh, uh, having done this? Uh, and he said, I feel kind of dirty. And I, and I said, well, you should, you know, you've, you've, you've said all this stuff. And he said, no, no, I feel dirty about this case because it was so quick. It really shouldn't be so easy, um, uh, which reminds me of uh, Rene Chapeau, who uh, once said that his biggest problem with Webb is that it's way too easy. Um, I would argue this patient, uh, who I know is now out of the hospital, is very well protected. It's obviously a really big aneurysm. There is some chance of a recurrence here. But again, I'll go back to my first slides. With ruptured patients, we really just want to keep them out of trouble uh, for long enough that, that we can get them through it. So um, the Webbit data at five years uh, does look very good. I can give you a spoiler alert to tomorrow's presentation. In five years of follow-up, in the entire cohort of uh, 148 patients treated, there's not one patient who re-ruptured their ruptured aneurysm or ruptured the unruptured aneurysm. There were, however, only nine ruptured patients in the entire Webbit cohort. I think the, the data that the Laurents have put, the, the real Laurents have put together, um, really documents what is intuitive and obvious to all of us in the room who's used this, which is that Webb's a, an ideal uh, treatment uh, for ruptured uh, wide neck bifurcation aneurysms and, and allows us to get many more patients through this disease and back to their lives than we would have with predicate technology. So in uh, conclusion, I, I think this is uh, a no-brainer, no pun intended. There you can see the brain's gone and there's just a web left in the skull. Um, while I don't want to be dogmatic and, and certainly believe there's not one therapy that's always good for every patient no matter what, I believe that the web is the largest advance in the treatment of ruptured aneurysms um, uh, since coiling. Uh, and I think the evidence that's been accumulated is some of the greatest evidence uh, in, in the treatment of, of any neurovascular disease. Uh, and it's something that, that I think everyone who has um, put in their armamentarium has learned to use effectively, even if they're unhappy and feel dirty about it. <laughs>